a lot of you have been wondering on how I make these barrels. When I do a commission, okay, how do I wax them? Do I wax them before? Do I wax them after? Do I wax the outside of it or just the inside? Okay. Well, the answer to that one is I do a, um, a lot before and a little after. And the reason is very simple because you want that wax to dry out. It, it protects it. it. Not only does it lube the barrel, but it also protects it from any work you do on the barrel. On this barrel, this is a chrono magnum barrel. Your breech is all the way back here, okay. And you want to keep. You want to do this without the breech finger open. And the big reason is, if you do have the finger and you're working on it while you're doing the waxing, you're gonna have to do it that so many times. You'll bend it. That's what I did on my other chrono magnum. So that it's kind of bent over here on this junction, and I don't want that to happen to this one. This is a commission for a friend, a long overdue friend. I have another commission I got to do for somebody else. I'm going to ask him if they want a Corona Magnum or other BDSM and pay me $40 after I send it to them. Very important after. I'm, I've been very slow with commissions. Um, it's not easy to keep up. And not only that, but it's just, well, I have a few little medical problems in California. And it's, it's, it's a little difficult, hard to do. But I figure I'm waxing this barrel. I am just about to machine it and put a stainless steel breech and then do the whole thing. But this is the part that takes a really long time because the what I'm going to do, I've already done 15 times with some, uh, with some white lightning bicycle lube, but the white lightning bicycle lube is Teflon. It's not really even and it gets kind of rough. What you want to do is you want to even it out with yet another type of wax. What I use is pledge. So the last five coats are, are, are pledge. I have two more coats left and then I'm up to 15 coats of wax. So what you do is really simple. You shake up the pledge very well. Now put in mind pledge is not just wax. It is oils. It is water. And the trick is you want to dry out the water but keep the oils and the wax. In. And what it does is it uses the Teflon lube as a fortifying layer of wax that dries on there. And then you dries in the sun, you put it on the dash of your car for a few days, you let it dry, and you let it sit like this so the air goes through both sides, okay? And then the last five coats, you do over five days. So probably Wednesday or Thursday, I'm going to start building this barrel, finally. Um, I had some, some barrels, but they were all 12 inches, and everybody knows I need that breech. And I was going to make it an over 9 16 breech, but I'm like, nah, let's do it 73 seconds all the way through. That way when the dart goes in, it's at the same height of the barrel. It's gonna be a very exciting, this person's gonna be very happy to get um, to get this commission. This is an incredible blaster. For reference, let's measure out 11 inches, and then there's gonna be an ultra match port at the end. So the overall length is actually gonna be more like 12 and an eighth, okay? That's how long the barrel is, and, the, and what's left after this is your feed tab right there. So this is exactly measured at 11 inches, okay? My other barrel on the um, on the other Chrono Mag is actually 10 inches effective. I gave him a one more inch more because mine uh, mine pops at, at higher velocities, higher springs, higher spring rates. If I put any kind of uh, Teflon on it, it tends to be too much pressure. So what you want to do is you want to leave it on the inside. You want to take a piece of white foam and push it out the other side okay what I did there is I applied a layer of wax on the inside and then I have uh, another piece of brass not stainless steel not aluminum you want to use pr plastic or brass or whatever on this one I got to use the brass because the plastic I usually use is not enough now I took this going out I took the uh, I took the pledge that looks like huh well <laughs> I don't want to go there. This is not an X-rated show. And now I'm twisting this back in. Okay. I'm going to run this few, through a few times. Okay. And you want to push it in like so. And take this marker like so. And I do recommend waxing the whole thing, the finger, everything. Okay. One more. One more. Okay. So I'm doing this from the crown side, 
Okay, this is the crown side. I've already crowned this, leveled this, everything. Okay, this was off of a 36 inch piece of breast stock and the crown, the natural crown was not even. I had to go back and, and crown the whole thing. Never assume your brass is perfectly cut. A lot of times this day and age with Canis brass, it isn't. It's close, but do you really want to have to recite it? I don't. Okay, there you go. There it is. Now, what you'll notice is on the inside of it, you'll see that it's got a stripe on it. You see that? On the inside, how it's all striped? Yeah. So those lines are going to air out and even out overnight. I got a little bit of water in there. I'm going to just pop it out like so. And there it is. So I just put a layer of wax straight down in it. I'm going to let this dry overnight. I'm going to run it through. Now what you do the next day is you take a clean dart like a, like an ACC. Like an ACC version 3. And you just, and you just push it through a few times until you have a to totally shiny surface. You're taking the dried out wax and you're unwaxing it. The pledge layers you don't need to cook, but the Teflon layers, the 10 Teflon layers you do. After that is done, you've got yourself a pretty permanent wax layer. And the user, all he has to do is take a dart, um, pretty much push a dart through with pledge around it, like after every meat or so, and he's going to keep that wax lube. He never goes through the Teflon, so he never really has to use Teflon. In the beginning, I was just using Teflon. And what I found was, this is much better. It's a much nicer surface. It's a very wet kind of feeling surface, but yet dry. And it doesn't chalk up the barrels like Teflon by itself. It evens it out very nicely. So I'm thinking next videos, I'm going to show making a Chrono Magnum Breach. I'm not sure about that yet. As you guys know, I'm not the best film artist in the world. But tell me in the comments what you think. Do you want you guys want to see it? How I make the pusher? How I make the barrel? And then maybe later I'll show you how I do the outer barrel, which is a, a, a piece of aluminum, uh, of anodized aluminum, just like that one up there. Yeah. Well, until next time, this is Chris Cartea. Don't you go changing. Peace out.